Hey everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we're looking at the shots that work together in combination to allow you to maximize your scoring in ITF Taekwondo. If that's something that sounds good to you, stay with us for this episode. everybody welcome to episode 106 of fight chat friday so we're going to have a look at some combinations today that work really well even at the high level so these can work at the at the color belt level and also at the really top level internationally so these are usually combinations and techniques that kind of work in flow together and they have a nice little rhythm to them that allow them to work a little bit more seamlessly than others and then have a little bit more success as a result yeah, absolutely. And what we're looking at, I suppose, whenever we talk about combinations is that idea of, well, once you've got one score, why not make it a bigger score? Why not add to it? Why not make the most of all of that hard work you've done to kind of break through your opponent's defenses and make that first score? And of course, it's the other ballpark thing of, well, the more shots that you can apply, the more likely one of them is actually going to yield a score that the referees can uh, can see and reward. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into the first one and we have to say this one is the most common everybody manages this one at some stage but it's still worth talking about and it's basically about following your hands so once you've created that initial inroad with the hands what can we get in afterwards and any any kick can follow the hands but the most common one is definitely the turning kick yeah absolutely it's the most common one for sure but as well at the same time it's the one that people don't get the correct distance on 90 percent of the time we see two great examples here from both people from ukraine actually dimitri and artem they pull out to get the correct distance after hands so mm -hmm. obviously the distance is really short when you're punching it's in close range and then you need to make that adjustment to fit in that kick and that's the important part that most people don't get with this combination although it's uh, one that's that's very common and it's the one that like a lot of people tick the box with a lot of people don't get it correct at the same time because of that distance yeah and it's still that you you know you have a very simple 50 50 you have to kick the right side of the body and it's so easy to end up kicking up the back because people will kick to the side that they prefer in their own training and all of a sudden they're again someone whose position has changed since they've gone into the hands or you know who spars with the opposite leg in front and they go into their natural normal rhythm and they end up kicking up the wrong side yeah i think that the key for this one to fit it in is either jam up on the brakes so you get a bit more forward momentum on the hands jam on the brakes like artem and blue here yeah. and then that creates space to fit in the kick or push right through them and try to get that momentum where they're going backwards and then that creates a little bit of instability and then you can find that shot as a result as well absolutely uh moving on from that we have uh, an interesting combination this is one that i think you've favored yourself quite a bit where uh looking at when you do manage to score that blindside turning kick it leaves you in a very very nice position to throw that uh, that side kick yeah definitely like this one obviously isn't a score i'm out of the ring but you get the idea it's it because it worked for me most people used to fight off the right and i was off the left so i favor that blind side over the shoulder high section turning kick if it lands brilliant if not you're in a great position then where people think they can go for their own blitz or come charging in yeah. and then it sets you up nicely for that that defensive psychic this one is a bit better because you have the, the knee bent so it's more of a short um defensive psychic as opposed to a long yeah. direct one so it's a nice short one as opposed to your traditional long side kick and we can kind of see the setup and the positioning that the opponent will see so once that leg has crossed the blind side shoulder your opponent is going to see your back and that's what's going to tempt them to go forward and uh, to try and take that opportunity to go to hands uh, it looks like you're defenseless yeah it, that's it like you come over the shoulder and it looks like you're stuck for a second and it's just that leg is there especially if you have that knee down it's a nice way to just sneak it in it's almost like a back kick without the turn really if you look at the kick so that that might give people a, a bit of a tip to fit that in especially if you lead off the opposite side and another combination of kicks that works both directions. So the turning kick to the axe, the axe to the turning kick, and they uh, they go together like bread and butter. It's just there, there's something lovely about the uh, the rhythm of these two and how one sets up the other. Yeah, these are really good, and most people don't get it correct in terms of the the 
the kind of the positioning of the foot but if you get it correct you're going to have the, the floor to use almost like a trampoline and just spring you up to the head then again so it works really well if you can link those together and Cassie actually was really really good at it of linking the two of these mm. um but most of the time like you might miss one but then the axe kick is a nice one to come over the top and vice versa. So one will lead into the other. If you land both of them, happy days. So we can see both directions here. So in, in this particular one, we're going from the uh, the turning kick to downward kick. And like you said, we're using the floor to kind of bounce and take the next shot over the blind side shoulder. And then we have the opposite here where once the downward kick is landed, it's much more difficult to defend that uh, uh, that that turning kick. So it's, yeah, you and know, it is body and head yeah the, the axe kick is just a little bit more circular than your traditional straight line one as well and that's sure. why they kind of link together so well because the both of the angles are kind of coming inward so they, they, they link nicely and you think one is going to the body but it's actually then switching up to the head with the axe because the trajectory of both of the kicks starting is quite similar all right let's have a little bit of a look at a combination of front leg and front hand and of course these can combine you know whichever way there's a you know but we have an example here where it's uh front hand and front leg and i kind of left this one in because it reminds me of something we used to you know do way back in the 80s and that'll tell you how long ago i i started but uh you'd flash the hand to the head and then kick to the body but it's you know it's a slightly more nuanced and uh, improved version of that but the idea is very very much the same that uh, you know it's very common when people are in a side fighting stance to just follow the front leg directly in with the front hand uh, you know try to double up on your score and pull away and in this case Rostick has gone in with the front hand first uh, flashing it promoting a reaction and then taking the exit straight away yeah, I think if you notice, like a couple of these ones that we've shown you already, a lot of them almost give you the impression that the person is vulnerable and yeah. it's almost like luring them in through that vulnerability. And that's kind of how you're able to score. It's like you're not in a good position. The opponent tries to take advantage. So it's actually the high level people are actually going to bite on these little lowerings and things like that. So sometimes you need that little bit of experience as well to be able to um, lure people in to get to get them to bite. It works on the right opponents. So the next one, and it's an interesting one because I've pointed this out to people so often uh, from our experience watching so many videos, how the back kick often offers up the next back kick. And I, I think the way I'd explain it to people is, uh, you know, there's a moment where you don't realize that you've been hit uh, after the first back kick lands and you kind of continue and it just kind of brings you on to the next one. And uh, we so often see that happening where the person scores the back kick on one side, immediately there's an opportunity to score it on the other. Yeah, I think for for me, this one is like, it's almost like an ego driven thing. It's like you get hit with a back kick and it's like, right, I want to get that back right away. And then you run into the second one. So it's a bit of a double whammy. Absolutely. It's a bit tough. And we have the, uh, the equivalent. And again, it's that missed kick into the combination. So this is a little bit like the, the blindside uh, turning kick you had earlier. You look like you're in a vulnerable position. You're inviting the hands. And then here we go with the back kick. And I mean, that could be a defensive side kick for all the world. It doesn't matter which it is. It happens to be the back kick in this uh, occasion. But, um, it, you know, we when we think about combinations, we think about I'm going to knock the person back and then I keep going and throw all of my other shots. And sometimes it's like that. But more often, it's it's something like that where it's a back to forward, forward to back kind of a situation. So, that, you know, there's a bit of a push and pull to it. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of um, attacking and then luring them in for counters as well. It's a push-pull action, exactly like you said, yeah. Yeah, we have this one as well, and this is an exit shot. And, it's you know, once you've seen it, you know, you'll want to try it. And uh, it's just one of those ones that can have such high value when it works. And the two-touch kick, there's a lot of other uh, names for it, but uh, it's uh, trying yeah. to take the bonus points on the exit. Yeah, that's that's a lovely one. If like that's, oh, that's the one, beautiful. the clock's running down, and you, you're winning four 0 and you're just trying to make an exclamation mark on the boat, and that's that's a lovely shot. If you can pull that off and land both of them, hats off to you. You deserve to do a celebration for that. It's a great shot. Yeah, and I mean, in this case, I think we had Vitali a little bit ahead already. He didn't need that score to win, but we did see uh, in previous championships at Alamein uh, in the final. Um, oh, who's he? he was against Ukraine actually, um, but actually needed the score. Uh, in order to to take the the win and win for it in the final, so you know that takes a bit of cojones. That takes a little bit of a little bit of self confidence to do that for sure. Um, but you know, when if you're looking to summarize why all of these things work, uh, in the end, they're they're little patterns of movement. One leads into the next, but they have a nice kind of rhythmic gap as well, where 
uh, you know, there's you're creating a little bit of a space that invite you, invites your opponent in and sets them up for the follow on shot. The other kind of combination, which, you know, we saw it there with Katja, where if you've been successful on the attack and you can turn your opponent's head a little bit, it allows the opening. And that's the one where we most normally have the follow on with hands or sorry, the follow on after the hands. So most of the time, the kick doesn't turn your opponent or push them so far that they're off balance. But the engagement with the hands does and that allows the, the finish with the leg. And I think that's the, the you know, the, by far and away the most common kind of combination that we end up with. Yeah, so there's six combinations that you can try out. Hopefully they link into your game a little bit. But we find that these kind of have like a natural flow to them. So they're nice little ones to link up together. There's there's, there's no real kind of like laboring with these. They're, they're easy to, to yeah. get to work together, let's say. So... Try them out. Let us know how it goes. And if you have any suggestions on other videos you want us to look at or combinations or techniques that work, don't work, let us know. And we'll definitely cover that as well. Excellent. Well, then we'll see everybody next Friday. Uh, and in the meantime, next Friday, I think we're going to do a big uh, preview of the World Cup. So definitely join us next week to have a look through the draws, the who's fighting who, who are we putting our money on? And, uh, you know, let's see where we go from there. Yeah, that one will be fun. So tune in for that. See you next week. Bye now. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.